What's up everyone? This is Dane with my design systems presentation remix. And today I'm going to be telling you about AgChat. If you're new here, AgChat is the podcast where we close the knowledge gap between the average consumer and the average producer by debunking common misconceptions of agriculture. This is my emerging media capstone project and I am really enjoying it. I get to talk to a lot of different professionals in the field, and this is my revamped design system. So let's get into it. So first is the visual style, the topography. I chose one font, Kent 4F, but with several different sizes to indicate different things. The body of it will be 25 point. The listing, and you'll see what I mean by that in a moment whenever I show you in the prototype, is 30 point, the headings for the list are 50 point, and the titles, as in up, up here at the top, are 109. The logos, this is just a few different variations of the logos and how they could be used. Uh, this one I could see going down the sleeve of a long sleeve shirt. And these three I can see being on the front pocket of a t-shirt, just some different variations and colors of it. And these would probably be on the back if I had to, because they're bigger and full-sized and have everything else on them. And then our color palette, I had to completely overhaul the color palette because what I did have, I did not check accessibility for. So here it is, the green, yellow, not John Deere, green or yellow anymore. Light brown, dark brown, and the secondary colors are just white, gray, and black because I wanted to keep it fairly neutral and not make it too busy. One of the biggest issues with this was finding a color and I had to use the Adobe color wheel to find this background actually because all of the other colors I had <clears throat> were not easily red on top of it. So I had to get another one and I really liked the way it turned out. The um, I really, really liked the burnt brown orange almost. Uh, other imagery, just some stock photos of farming. So, um, a paintbrush and a book that I made in Illustrator that are just uh, meant to go on that petting with the titles. <clears throat> so acceptable versus unacceptable use of the visual style. It's acceptable to put this green on top of this brown, but it's not okay to put the black on top of the brown because colorblind people won't be able to tell it. And I'm a little colorblind and I'm even having some issues tell ascertaining this. So being able to know what colors will show up is something I completely missed taking account for, but now I do know, and I know the relationships between all these colors. Um, with the visual style and also the editorial style, keep it transparent. They're free of judgment. The design, the logo, somebody told me way back is that it should be something that can go on the front pocket of a t-shirt, but also a coffee mug and be recognizable. So like I said, this on the front pocket of a t-shirt or this going down the sleeve or any of the other variations going on the back, the full size one. The black and the gray are not easy to see, so use them sparingly. They are okay on top of this brown, but not this one. So uh, that's a big don't. And also, as far as the editorial side goes, an example of what not to do is think you know everything and that you don't have to be challenged in any way. So the editorial guide, our mission statement is what I said in the intro, 
to close the knowledge gap between the average consumer and the average producer by debunking common misconceptions of agriculture. And I think that that's pretty short and sweet to the point. It's I host different professors from the College of Ag on to the podcast and they explain to me why this misconception is the way it is, how it came about and how we can stop it. So I think that wraps all of encompasses that all pretty well. So the voice of Ag Chat is to be without judgment because nobody knows they're wrong and nobody's wrong on purpose. So we absolutely no arrogance or airhead in this. The tagline, let's put the culture back in agriculture. I'm very proud of that. That might be one of the most clever things I've ever said. And the audience, I did have a pretty open-ended, oh, it's for everyone audience deliberation last time, but I think I really want this for, to be for college aged people that have not grown up on a farm and don't know much about a farm and they listen to podcasts like a true crime podcast and they stumble upon ag chat and they learn that you know milk doesn't come out of a tap and I think that a lot of people in college college age around my age because of the generational gap are disconnected from farmers I'm definitely the minority having grown up on one. So my ideal audience would definitely be my peers that are just not aware of how much goes into producing food. So my component library, these are the five that make up the, ooh, excuse me, that make up the tool stack for how I'm making a podcast like Ad Chat possible. So first we have Otter and Otter is a very useful web service that will transcribe video and recorded audio into text and also the recording of it. So that makes it a lot more accessible to maybe those that don't hear as well and they can read it and follow along or if they can't see and they can listen to it. I think that that was really important and definitely, definitely making it a lot more feasible to run ag chat. The Roadcaster Pro is in Grady. It's a very, very friendly, user friendly machine because it can do a lot, but it's not daunting. It's not difficult to see or use or ascertain what the buttons do. As a UX UI pros, it's really, um, it'd be ironic if it was anything but, but, um, that's a UX UI component that has definitely helped and made it possible at all to have Ag Chat. Adobe Audition is the editing software that I've been using and I'm still getting the hang of it because there are a lot of things that you can do with it and I need to figure out what they are so that I can actually use them and not mess anything up but it's very useful. It's not terribly hard to use. I did learn pretty early on that you have to convert a WAV to an MP3 in order to upload it. But if you want to edit it, leave it as a WAV. So, you know, already learning some stuff. And then Figma, <clears throat> which is where this prototype is being housed. <laughs> it's very useful because it can store things very well and you can just reformat it or leave it the formatting already on there like for buttons i did a lot of buttons for the typeface i had the four of them set in so i could just highlight it and select the typeface and it would change it's very user friendly and it gives you a great conceptual idea of how a prototype should be run and last spotify Spotify and its subsidiary Anchor are going to be two very important softwares in my uh, tool stack, along with the other platforms. Because once you learn how to use an RSS, which jokingly someone said it means really simple syn syndication, but it fits for me. It Whenever you post it on one, it'll post on the other four as well. So that's really vertical. And I think that it's gonna be 
It'll make it streamline the posting process a lot more. Okay, my pattern library. Here uh, is how the back and home buttons came to be. And I used them as a template for every other button on this prototype. So they are, I don't know, interactive buttons. They're not smart buttons because I had to make these three different graphics and give them to the state of idle, hover, and while pressing. So this is just how it is, but you see it goes to this one whenever I hover over it. And whenever I press it, the while press state goes white. And same thing with the back button, except I prototype or I path the home button to always go back to this screen. The back button just takes you where you were before. So it's pretty cool. I just, it has a back button function and I didn't know about it. So I had to set up both of these the same way, but then path them differently. So that's why they're different buttons because this one has the back function and this one takes you home every time. It was pretty easy to do just setting it up and having the path with the ball right here that on top that says uh, while hovering or while pressing switch with this one. So I thought it was pretty cool. And I did it for all the buttons, like you can see, and it worked really well. And I hope you've enjoyed this prototype of AgChat. Let me make sure I got it all. Oh, what a convenient symbol, huh? Um, yeah. If you want to listen to AgChat, I will <clears throat> link down below whenever I have an episode published. And remember, y'all, let's put the culture back in agriculture. Thank you.